New Balance has made the comeback of the century. From being on the verge of bankruptcy in the 1980s to securing a reputation as one of the top global brands, New Balance's story is truly remarkable. But how did they go from being the dad shoe brand to being worn by some of the biggest superstars in the world? With how quickly trends change, it is almost unheard of for a company to remain in the spotlight for an extended amount of time. Amazingly, New Balance was founded long before Nike, Puma or even Adidas. However, New Balance's journey to the top of the shoe market was no walk in the park. New Balance's long-held reputation goes back to 1906, when it was founded by the brand's owner William J. Riley. Riley's motivation was to design footwear that was distinctive, comfortable to wear and would improve performance for athletes by emphasizing durability and functionality. Riley is said to have derived the name of the company from observing chickens in his yard. As the story goes, he used a chicken foot on his office desk to demonstrate how his arch supports worked to potential customers. He pointed out how the chicken's three-pronged foot resulted in perfect balance and explained how his shoe design could offer similar support and balance for humans. This unique and memorable demonstration helped Riley to emphasize the quality and functionality of his product to his customers. In 1906, Riley would found New Balance Arch Support Company and open a small factory producing arch supports and accessories, focusing its target on laborers who are forced to stand hours a day, like firemen and police. In the 1930s, New Balance expanded into the athletic market and established themselves as the leader in a rapidly growing niche. While athletes in baseball and track and field praised New Balance's specialty footwear, the company struggled to find widespread success. You see, New Balance succeeded because they focused on comfort rather than style, which made them popular with athletes but hard for the general public to adopt. It was only some time later that the brand gradually became a favorite amongst athletes and brands who wanted tailored sneakers. This inspired New Balance to design the first New Balance sneaker, the Trackster, released in 1961 and initially manufactured at home by the kids. The Trackster was the world's first running shoe with a rippled sole for traction. New Balance also offered this revolutionary sneaker in a variety of widths to accommodate all athletes. The Tracksters were a great success and gradually rose to popularity among colleges and students who embraced them for their comfort and the ability to purchase trainers in a wide range of sizes. As you can tell, New Balance was at an all-time high. However, every high has its lows. Despite their Trackster shoe becoming the unofficial shoe of YMCA programs, sales were lackluster at best. The company only had six employees and peak sales at this time were only around 20 to 30 pairs a day. New Balance soon became a victim of a cruel twist of fate. As time went on, the brand could not survive the competition and was unable to maintain its popularity with the emergence of new, upcoming, more hip brands. Brands like Adidas and Nike took over, bringing new favorites to the people. While its popularity within American suburbia raked in incredible profits for the brand, cooler releases from the 80s such as the Adidas Forum and the era-defining Nike Jordans were more prevalent within the street culture. New Balance had plateaued and desperately needed a new direction if they wanted to grow or even survive. This new direction would come in the form of 28-year-old Jim Davis, who bought the company in 1972 believing that leisure time products would be a high growth market. He was right, and New Balance quickly began growing at an impressive rate. During the 1970s and early 80s, New Balance abandoned their insole production in favor of directly incorporating insoles into shoes. This approach was a game changer for the company, and they quickly became the golden standard of athletes and runners. The company expanded into the UK in the early 80s, opening a factory in Workington. However, disaster was right around the corner for the innovative company. You see, 
While New Balance prioritized comfort, which made it a hit with athletes, companies like Nike and Adidas had sprung up which focused on stylish modern designs. Throughout the 1980s and 1990s, New Balance continued to grow in popularity among serious runners, but they struggled to keep up with larger athletic shoe brands like Nike and Adidas, who dominated the market with their flashy designs and aggressive marketing campaigns. The general perception now turned to one that was extremely negative and controversial. The brand was attacked, not for its products, but stigmatized by the audience that it was popular in. In the general public's eye, New Balance wasn't as cool or trendy as other brands, and they quickly became known as the dad shoes. This light-hearted jab at the brand was fueled by the majority demographic of New Balance's customers, a demographic predominantly composed of middle-aged men and suburban fathers. New Balance's new negative image was even talked about in the mainstream media, hopping on the bandwagon and further ridiculing the brand. Saturday Night Live, an American late-night television show, said, What do you picture when you think up the average New Balance customer? Is it the middle-aged white dude with a scruffy face and a flannel shirt? Or is it the younger customer caught queuing up for the latest collab releases or hunting down a prized Made in USA pair? This unflattering title destroyed New Balance's attempts at gaining widespread acceptance, and soon they were faced with an ultimatum. If nothing changed, companies like Puma, Adidas, and Nike would continue to dominate, and New Balance would be left behind. However, without a groundbreaking change, there seemed to be no hope. You might think that New Balance would step down or try to do damage control through low-effort endeavors, but instead, they stood in the face of adversity and did not back off. Faced with a difficult decision, New Balance decided to do what they were always good at, making good products at affordable prices. They upscaled their marketing and brought innovation according to the needs of the time. They collaborated with big brands such as Norse Projects, Stussy, United Arrows, and Junior Watanabe I. They worked with influential and well-known artists, designers, and even fashion-forward people who shared their vision. These collaborations gave their shoes new life by introducing original concepts and cutting-edge designs. Slowly and surely, this innovation produced the needed growth, and the brand was able to rise above the negative perception the younger population held. The brand, which was once derided, is now praised for its retro cool charm and ability to integrate fashion and function. New Balance became increasingly popular as time went on. They elevated their product line, supplying a variety of clothing and footwear that won over fashion devotees all over the globe. A new generation resonated with New Balance as an embodiment of authenticity and distinctive characteristics, owing to the corporation's blend of vintage styles and contemporary design components. Thus, New Balance chose to stride with the waves of the time by taking advantage of the criticism thrown at them and elaborately used the power of social media and the upcoming trends to reinvest themselves in the market. New Balance continued to cement itself into sportswear and popular culture through numerous successful sneaker releases. In 2001, New Balance released the now popular 911 sneaker, which was famously sported by the late Steve Jobs at public events for a number of years. New Balance's recovery in the industry was only possible because of how they continued to innovate, or staying true to the values that made them successful in the first place. From being called dad shoes, to being worn by some of the biggest names in the world, New Balance truly has pulled off a comeback of the century.